Good morning. How are we all enjoying this beautiful fall weather? Today's word of the day is cornerstone. A cornerstone is a stone that forms the base of a corner of a building, joining two walls. It is the first stone set as the foundation of a building. All other stones will be set in reference to this stone. If it's out of whack, then the whole thing is going to be off kilter. I spent an entire mission trip one year making shelves for storing towels and bed linens uh, for Good Samaritan Ministries down in Los Fresnos, Texas. There were three of us handling the project. The project manager, my buddy Sammy, and the lone woman in the group who obviously knew absolutely nothing about hitting a nail with a hammer. Um, the lead person every time we lined up the boards would ask, is it square? With that kind of intensity, it became a joke to, the, to Sammy and I because for years, and probably even if we ran into each other today, we'd ask each other, is it square? <laughs> Let me tell you, those shelves could have withheld a hurricane and they probably have. Uh, they were definitely not flimsy. You know, the walls of our lives can't be straight if our cornerstone isn't square or if it's out of whack. Let's pray. Most Holy One, we have gathered together this day to spend time in worship of you. As we offer up our prayers of petition and thanks, praise you in song, hear your words spoken and proclaimed, and share in your son's sacred meal. May our efforts be pleasing to you and a blessing to all of us gathered in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. morning. Y'all have your coffee, right? We're good. So this morning we're going to do a little exercise. It helps me to worship. It takes about one minute. What I want you to do is like, maybe close your eyes. Take all the world's stuff and put it at the cross. Now, after we worship and after Pastor Scott gives us the word of God, if you choose to pick that back up and take it with you, you can do that. Maybe not. So just take a moment and listen to Pam sing this awesome song that's new for us. Set all that stuff at the cross. If you want to stand and you want to Sing this with us, that'd be great.
we have another song that Pamela worked up, and it's a little different than you might know it. So just buckle up. slow down a little bit.
Well, good morning, everybody. How are we doing today? Good, good. I have people walking in front of me. Look out here now. So that's a good problem. Well, it's good to see you all this morning, and we're coming to our time of worship where we enter into a time of prayer. And so I invite you during this time, as we have a moment of silent meditation, that you go ahead and give to God what you need to give to God. And then if any of you want to come forward and form the Garden of Prayer, we invite you to do that as well. And then after a period, I'll lead you toward the Lord's Prayer. So let's take a moment and let's go there, shall we? Dear Lord, we thank you for today for a chance to come here and gather in prayer. Lord, we pray that you be with us to continue to strengthen us and encourage us in life's way. It can be difficult times to get through life, and sometimes we get a little discouraged. Lord, we pray for your continuing presence, your guidance, your leadership, your, your vision, to help us in those times and in those situations where we simply need to look to you. We thank you, Lord, that you are our cornerstone, that you are what we build upon. Our life is focused upon you, and it is with you, that we gather our strength, that we gather our wisdom, that we gather our courage. Lord, we pray for those who are dealing with health issues right now, that you might be with them and guide them and help them. Lord, we pray for those who are recovering from surgeries, recovering from procedures, that you do what you do best. You are the great healer, and we thank you for that, and we pray that you heal their bodies. And Lord, for the rest of us, we pray that you continue to give us a passion and a vision to follow you, to build our lives around you. And for that, you know that we need Jesus Christ. And so we thank you for his life, his sacrifice, what he gave, we could only hope to match. And so, Lord, help us as we walk our earthly way to walk like Jesus did, to look out for others, to take care of them, and to share the good news wherever possible. And, of course, we thank you for that great gift of your Son, our Savior, Jesus, in that he gave his life. And in that giving of that life, he has opened us up for access to heaven with you. We thank you for that most of all. And so today, as the children of God, we simply want to pray the prayer that Jesus Christ himself taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We're doing offering a little more exciting today. 
So Charlie's getting us started, but I'm going to basically give you a couple words about offering. And today I thought, oh, what a great thing. I had to go down and I didn't have to go down. I got blessed to go down to uh, Crazy Faith and see what they were up to today. And they had me on milk and juice. And this one person, they come up to me and they say, can I have two milk? And of course, you know what I said, no. <laughs> no, I said, I said, of course you can have a second. And they were so thankful that sometimes we forget the smallest offering of grace can have such a large impact on people around us. And so today, as you give your offering, we don't know the size of the offering. And I don't want to know. I just want to know that you're giving to God and that you're sharing with God the good news as you go out this week. So this week, we give thanks to God, and then we go out and share the good news with God. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that you pour into our lives. We pray that what we give back to you is another blessing to someone else. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, and everybody says, Amen. We're speeding it up today, in case you haven't noticed, because we've already given you the bread and the juice. So Peggy didn't get a very long song there, but it was good. So it was good. So we'll thank her for that after. Make sure you tell her that. And uh, we'll keep working on this. And we're kind of getting the flow going, and I feel like we are getting a flow. So that's pretty good. But today we come to the table, and what we're offering at the table is the body and blood of Jesus Christ, the body and his sacrifice and what he did the blood in that what he gave. He gave all. And so as we come to this table, we have to ask ourselves the question, are we prepared and are we ready to give all to God? If we aren't, then this table isn't for us because what God asks of you is everything because he gave everything for you. It was on the night of Jesus' betrayal, as he gathered his disciples around him, that during the course of the meal, Jesus took bread. And after blessing it and breaking it, he said, take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. In a similar manner, after the meal was over, Jesus took a cup. And he said, this cup is a new covenant. It will be sealed with my blood. Take, drink. And so we come to the table to eat of the bread, to drink of the cup, and to proclaim the saving grace of our Lord and Savior until he comes again. This is a gift from God to the people of God. And the people say, Amen. Amen. Oh, let's sing. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy
Today's gospel reading comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 33 through 46. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and moved to another place. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit. The tenants seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then he sent, another, sent other servants to them, more than the first time, and the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, this is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? He will bring those wretches to a wretched end, they replied, and he will rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him his share of the crop at harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read the scriptures? 
The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. Anyone who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. Anyone on whom it falls will be crushed. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parables, they knew he was talking about them. They looked for a way to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowd because the people held that he was a prophet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I should probably warn you right out the gate, I'm getting in your kitchen today. So, you know, it's only fair warning, right? And so I, I love hearing sermons, as long as they're not about me. So, but today I might get in your kitchen. From Isaiah chapter 5, I will sing about the one I love, a song about my loved one's vineyard. The one I love had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He broke up the soil, cleared it of stone, planted it with the finest vines. He built a tower in the middle of it and even hewed out a wine press there. He expected to yield good grapes, but instead it yielded worthless grapes. So now, residents of Jerusalem and men of Judah, please judge between me and my vineyard. What more could I have done? Seriously, what more could I have done for my vineyard than I did? Why then, when I was expecting to yield good grapes, did I yield worthless grapes? Now I will tell you what I'm about to do with my vineyard. I am going to remove the hedge and it will be consumed. I will tear down the wall and it will be trampled. I will make it a wasteland and it will not be pruned or weeded. Thorns and briars will grow up. I will also give orders and there will be no rain to fall on it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah the plant he delighted in. But when he looked for justice, he saw injustice. When he looked for righteousness, he heard nothing but the cries of the helpless. So, we get newsletters from various churches, and I enjoy all of them. I really do. I enjoy them immensely. And this past week, we got a newsletter from Cheyenne, and I'm not picking on Cheyenne, in case they're watching. Um, not picking on Cheyenne. But what I really loved about it was on the front page, my good friend, the minister, Ari Smith, was talking about how we needed to be a forward-looking church, how we needed to look at the future, how doing church as we've always done church is a recipe for some kind of disaster, something that's going to come upon us. And we'll cry out and wonder why it happened, but in truth, it's because we just couldn't change. And it was, it was a really good article, and I liked it, and I was inspired, and then I turned the page over. And on the next page was a huge, much larger article about the history of this church and how this church has been around for 150 years and the things they've done in the 150 years and all the wonderful stuff that's occurred in the past 150 years and how we should celebrate the past 150 years. Well, yeah, but what about tomorrow? Oh, heck, forget tomorrow. What about today? What about right now? Where God is listening, where God is listening hard, and what is he hearing? The prophet Isaiah was very clear in what he's hearing, and I'm telling you, Matthew isn't far off in saying the exact same thing. People with power continuing to try and seize more power, continuing to try and think they know better than Jesus Christ and God. 
that they know the proper way forward, that they know if we just do this, this will work. And who needs God? After all, we're smart, we're intelligent, and we know how to do it. So let's do it and celebrate our past. Well, today, I'm here to encourage you all to look forward. We have a board up in the hallway. It's been up a while. Pamela made it up for us, and it's a really pretty board. But, you know, it's not that it's a pretty board. It's asking you a question board. And the question is, where do you think this church will be in five years? What's your vision of where this church will be? I, I know you all know the past history of this church. I'm not questioning that. And the box that I'm about to put out isn't a suggestion box for tomorrow or a complaint box for yesterday. It's a vision box for what do you see in five years? Can we still exist here in this building? Can we be here? What ministries will we be doing that God will say, I see justice? What ministries will we be doing where God sees, I see them helping the poor, the afflicted, those who need help? That's the vision I want you to put in that box. That's what I want you to share with me. And then we all get together at some point and we try to decide if we can make sense of all the stuff you guys are going to write down. And it's going to be beautiful, all the stuff you write down, because y'all are so intelligent. And the only mistake you made was you hired the dumbest guy to be the pastor. I'm not 100% sure why you did that, but, you know, at least I'm willing to risk stuff. Um, went to the... Oh... I went up, what was that, last week, Teresa and I went up and we saw a friend and he was in a um, skilled nursing care, right? Yeah, I'm getting this right. And um, who was, I'm not telling you where, and um, I, I was horrible. I mean, it was a disaster. You walked in and your nose just, you just, ugh. You were insulted right in the door. And then you walk down the halls and the filth and the dirt and the, ah. Then you walked in the room and saw the lack of attention that your friend was receiving. And I couldn't help myself. I went a little nuts. And um, not only called on the nursing home, but called on his family and said, get up here and fix this. And uh, they did. Good for them. Good for them. But we can't turn once we see a problem. I, I couldn't have walked away from that and still been a Christian to see someone suffering. I mean, to the point where there, were, there was gunk on his neck that was causing fester and blister because they hadn't washed him. I mean, oh, my gosh. I can't be a Christian and walk away from that. Well, I'm, I'm here to tell you, in little old Pueblo, we have issues. Things that we as a church need to decide, how are we as a church going to respond to that? Now, I know we've done stuff in the past, and I'm not questioning that you guys have done well in the past. I want you to hear that. I'm not questioning that. But I am saying different times call for different responses. Different times call for new ideas. Different times call for risk and not, well, we've always done it this way. Vision forward. Think about 
how this church can help this community. That's what we're really after when I hear these scriptures. That's why I read the Isaiah scripture, because the Matthew scripture plays off of Isaiah. I mean, it's an echo, a strong echo. Matthew isn't writing this in a vacuum. He's thinking Isaiah while he's writing what he's writing about this vineyard and about the people who think that just because they sit in the pew, no, oh, I'm sorry, just because they work in the field entitles them to something more than what they're due. That the people who work in the field think that the master is so absent, so far away, so removed, that they can do whatever they want, including taking over. And Jesus is quite clear in this. I mean, you know, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the, the people that are, are coming in, hey, Tony, would you go out and see what he wants? Police officer. And, um, you know, just trying to see what's going on in this world we try to take too much control instead of letting God and giving God glory for when we need to. So that's where we're at in this whole situation, in this whatever you want to call it, allegory, parable, story, real life example. Because the honest truth of this passage is back in Jesus' day, a lot of times Ownership was important only if you could maintain ownership. Does that make sense? I mean, I have a deed on my house right now, and if somebody came and kicked me out of my house, I would have recourse, right? Not so much back then. If someone bigger and stronger and more powerful came and said, I like your property, get out, the chances were you got out, even if it was your property and it had belonged to your family for 100 years and blah, blah, blah. Well, in the passage again, God reveals himself to be someone not to be trifled with, not to be ignored, not to be thinking second-guessed even. God is expecting, when he planted this church, Fruit. God is expecting fruit. And what fruit are we producing? That is an extremely internal, in your qu kitchen question. Now, a lot of times when we hear the word producing, we think about Genesis where God says, go forth, be multiply, you know, multiply, be, you know, be fruitful, produce more of the same, produce more of the same, produce more of the same. And sometimes we think that must apply to churches where if, if our attendance goes from 75 to 105, man, we are producing. And conversely, if we go from 105 to 75, we must be in trouble. But it's funny in the New Testament stories, which Matthew is in the New Testament, so I'm going to be honest to the New Testament, that's rarely what producing is ever mentioned like. Instead, it has different ways. For John, it's about loving God and loving others. Are you producing that fruit? Loving God and loving others. For Matthew, right here, it's all about adherence to God. You know God's will. Are you doing it? Are you doing it? We preach here every week. We preach gospel every week. We preach scripture every week so that you won't be fooled about scripture. And so that you know what God demands of you. Luckily, it's pretty simple. Love God, love others. 
Walk humbly before God. Be careful. For Paul, because it's Paul, and he can't ever say anything in two words, he has like nine fruits of the Spirit. But it's all internal. It's all internal. We try to get it outside of ourselves because nobody wants the sermon in their kitchen. So we try to get it outside ourselves. It's the church's fault. It's the community's fault. It's, you know, Teresa's fault. I didn't work that one in. But um, it's somebody else's fault other than mine. And yet Paul and all the New Testament writers cut you no breaks here. And they say the fruits of, of the Spirit, the fruits that you must produce are in you. And are you producing them or are you not? And if you are producing them, then that command to love God and love others becomes visible. Visible. I can say all I want, I love God. And I can say all I want, that I love all you. But if I don't demonstrate it, am I really telling the truth? So the challenge today is to put down our cornerstone. If we say we are Christians, then people should look at us and see the cornerstone of Jesus Christ that we are building off of. They should see it. And not only in the good times, not only when the KU Jayhawks score 50 plus points in one game. I mean, that was a beautiful day yesterday. But maybe even today, if, you know, my favorite team loses, are they able to still see Jesus Christ? Or more importantly, when you're serving God, can people see that you're serving God? Or are you just talking about it. Now that's kind of the end of the sermon, but I, I'm not done because I'm still in your kitchen and I apologize for being in your kitchen. You've only had a couple of these in the whole time I've been here, so get over it, all right? She you is. I don't want any complaints in the suggestion box. I mean, about the vision box, about preacher got in our kitchen, we didn't like it. But I do, I do have couple more things I just want to say to you all, and it's, I want to do it here rather than announcement time or anything like that. Um, you know, I've kind of made this commitment to crazy faith, and it's been a month-to-month -month thing. And what I've decided is, as long as it depends on me, and I guess it does, um, we're going to get coffee down to them every week. So I need people to help me take coffee down for the rest of the year for the rest of the year. You can sign up one week and milk and juice. And I need that for the rest of the year. And I'm just throwing that out there for you all. This is being put in your kitchen. And if you're able to help, that's great. And if you can't, that's great. But I want you to know the service opportunity is there. And then what I'd like to do is then let you all have a voice. And so then at the congregational meeting that we're going to have in December, let you all vote. What a concept. What a country. Do you want to continue or is that enough? And I will respect it either way. I will respect it either way. Because I think we as a church need to move, not just me as a pastor. And me as a pastor can do other things besides that. But we as a church, if we want to continue doing that, I think we as a church need to decide to do that. And so I'm going to, I'm, that, that's my offering to you all that I hope you can help me. And then that's also my, my, my promise to you that come the board meeting, you all can vote about it 
and your pastor will not be upset either way. But he wants to give you an opportunity. Is that fair? Is that fair? Well, good. I'm glad it's fair. And so the, the sign-up, uh, the little box and the, the place to put your vision for five years will be down the hallway in front of the board Pamela did. And I don't know if you noticed or not, since I'm talking about this, this is a semi-announcement. Across the hall from that, just on the other side of the hall, is board news. And so if you ever want to know what's going on in the board, there's packets there you can just pull right out and you can read what every committee's up to. And so you can also do that. And we want you to be informed so that if you want to help in any way with any committee, boy, you can, okay? So today, we invite you that if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that this is a wonderful time to do it, to come forward and say, yes, I want to work in God's field. And yes, I believe Jesus Christ is the cornerstone which to build off of. And I want to do that today. Or maybe you want to join the church because you think, okay, you know, this church has it going on and I want to be a part of this fellowship and so I want to come down and join the church today. We invite you to do that as well. And then I always throw this one in and I know I've never had anybody take me up on it, but I want the offer out there. If you want me to pray with you, if you got something on your heart you want to give to God, you don't have to tell me. Just come forward and I'll pray with you. And so those are our three options today. But the one thing I do hope you all do as you stand and sing is if there's anything you need to give to God during this time, give it to God, go out with a clean slate, and get ready to work. God bless you all. Real good. Amen. Please stand. coin offering is for the shut-ins Christmas gifts. Uh, OCC, I think, is still collecting Play-Doh. Um, and there will be a packing party next Sunday. So uh, if you can stick around for a while next Sunday, they're going to be packing boxes. And um, Los Pobres is, uh, I mean, the women's evening group is still collecting towels and blankets uh, for Los Pobres. Uh, there's an elders meeting Tuesday night at 6. Um, let's not forget that uh, Sunday, the 29th, we will have our trunk or treat, fall festival, whatever we want to call it, 
Um, we're collecting candy for that event, and don't forget to dress up your cars, and there will be a lunch served. Um, October 27th to the 29th, we'll be hosting the CYF Fall Retreat. Um, registration sheets are available out in the hallway. And let's see what else I have here. Oh, please, before you leave, have a look at the, uh, what the stitchers have put together for OCC. Uh, they do beautiful work all year. Yeah. And how many of you have Gmail email accounts? You haven't been getting your newsletter, have you? <laughs> Poor Barb has been working at this and working at this and trying to get the issues uh, taken care of. The issue is with Gmail itself. They put in some new uh, filters. filters to filter out spam mail. And unfortunately now, as an organization, we have to be registered and approved by them before they will allow our emails to go to Gmail accounts. Um, in the meantime, they're just completely blocked. They're not going to spam or anything else. So basically, bottom line, uh, if you need uh, the newsletter, it's available on our website, cccpueblo.org, uh, or you can pick one up out in the hallway. And um, please be patient. Barb is working on it, but we have no idea how long it's going to take. <laughs> That's fair when you're dealing with that, yeah. Unfortunately, oh, no. when it's completely out of your hands. Huh. Very good. Any, anybody else have an announcement they need to do? Uh, I, 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 I. Uh, 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 uh. Thirteenth of November. And if any of you want to go to the processing center up in Denver, that's a, a job, but it's wonderful. Uh, uh, you can start making reservations for that. So okay. All right. Very good. Any others? Okay. Hearing none. Today's ending words are just pretty simple: is what's your cornerstone? And unless your cornerstone is Jesus Christ himself, I have to tell you, your wall is crooked and you built on sinking sand. And so God bless you all. Go out, feel the love of Christ, and share it with others. Amen. Oh, and look at our new, look at that new thing we got on the, I like that. We're moving up in the world. God bless you all. <laughs>